Are we live? Are we live? <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at me walking through the house. The hacienda, as we like to call it. Um, I'm trying to find a cheery place to do this TikTok, pop-up TikTok live. Because um, it's kind of gloomy outside, so I decided to do it in this nice cheery room here. Let me see where I can sit myself down. But good morning. Good morning and good night. Good, ev good evening. <laughs> yeah, I figured on a Saturday... I don't know about you, but Saturday, isn't that the day you're supposed to get, like, all your chores done and stuff? Um, yeah, you know what? Here's what we'll do. I'm not going to hold this the entire time. Hmm. Maybe I'll do this. Maybe I'll sit at the bar. So, anyhow, yes, I am here today on this somewhat gloomy... And don't worry, people who get kind of nauseous, I know some of you might be getting motion sickness here. Um, I'll try to steady cam myself here momentarily, I'm just trying to set myself up. Set myself up for success, as it were. There we go. That's a little bit better. All right. So. So. Yeah. It's a Saturday. Uh, and I figured this might be the day that you're like, I'm busy during the week. I can't even, as many people say. Uh, so I want to help you make a plan, get started, get have some fun, but get it done. Get it done. So that when you um, are wanting to do some stuff, I don't know, then you just want to go out and play. Okay, so good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, um, April and Dana and Hilda and Julie and Britchick and Lori and Carolyn and Gato Gato and Marilyn and Miss, Miss Stringy and Becky. Oh, all sorts of people showing up. So nice. So yeah, this is what I call kind of a pop-up. Pop-up. I can hear the Boston in my voice when I say that. Um, a pop-up TikTok live, which means it wasn't scheduled, um, but I thought I might do it. Now, if you were on, the, I will always say this because it's just, I just want you to know, um, if you were on the, if you are on the Destination Decluttered email mailing list, you had an inkling that I might show up today, you know? Um, so here I am, and I will be with you for about the next hour or so, because then it's Saturday and I've got my own stuff to do as well, and, um, uh, Oh, hold on. I, I, I need my little, I, I need my, um, my handkerchief, my kerchief, not my kerchief, but my handkerchief, my, my nose kerchief. Mm -hmm. mm. Much better. Okay. <laughs> gato, gato, uno, dos, tres, just loves us. Thank me. Thank you. Well, you know what? I, uh, you guys, the reason I do my one-on-one -on -one coaching, especially, but even right now, just doing a TikTok live. I know what a difference it makes in my life, and it had made in my life because of the absence of encouragement. And I'm not being dramatic, but I'm just saying, having a little bit of hope and possibility and encouragement can make such a freaking huge difference that it would, as my mom would say, it would be a sin not for me to not do that. Now, I can only do so much on a TikTok Live, right? There we go. Dana Reynolds is saying, I love your Saturday morning pop-ups. It motivates me. Okay, so wonderful. Motivation. Here's, here's kind of the ingredients to getting decluttered and staying that way, or doing anything, really, is getting a destination. Like, what's your goal today? Like, Dana, what do you want to do today? You're motivated. You've got energy in your tank. Getting in gear, but just driving in the, in the direction that you want to get so that by the even just by the end of today, you can ideally write down in your little travel guide you know, this is what I do with my one-on-one -on -one clients is every day, no matter what you did, no matter what went on, try to pull some good out of the bad. Try to, to remind yourself, accentuate the positive, eliminate the negative. Am I right, dearie? That's right. <laughs> um, so I know what a difference it has made to me. I want to help you and, and just get you even that taste of having somebody in your life who doesn't judge, just shows up and is encouraging and um, can help you plan, make a plan and help you um, find a way to make it fun. Gamify it, they used to say in the biz, okay? Um, and it makes such a difference. It makes such a difference. So here I am hoping to make a good difference in your Saturday morning here. What day, what day is today? Uh, the, the February 24th or something like that, okay? TYAA is saying, you're so right. My mother-in-law was my inspiration and my motivator to do a lot around the house. Well, you know what? I don't know if she's still around or not, but everybody in your life that you want to, that may, no, may no, no longer be here, they live in your heart. So, so think of her. I had a great aunt. My great aunt Agnes, we called her Aga. She was also my godmother. God, the, 
the Boston is strong this morning, people. I'm just saying, because I'm talking about Aunt Aga, is I remember when I was in my early 20s, she must have been in her crap. She was in her 70s or 80s. Um, and maybe even older than that, regardless. Um, and I would go over to her little one-bedroom apartment that she had sh shared. She, she and my Uncle Jim had gotten after World War II. They had lived there their entire lives. Uncle Jim passed away. Her sister passed away. And um, I would help her do some little decluttering things. Now, some of it was, you know, she, you, she had to be very... Um, oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, she had to be very abstemious, I guess, or she had to be very conscious of what she had in her house because it was very small and she lived there for, you know, decades. Um, but even then, she knew at a certain point she, she wanted some help passing it along. So I know what it means to have somebody in your life that can kind of help you with these things. So, yeah, and making you feel that you're not alone because you're not alone. That is one of the things that I will always say about everybody can... There are definite detriments to social media, but one of the positive things are is for people who feel alone when they're struggling with something real to realize you aren't alone, to find your community, to find your people, and to, uh, you know, let, let that, tr that, that, I don't want, what's the word I want to use? That crew, that gang, that pack that you have help you live a better life, live a life you want to live. Now, if you're living a life you want, yay, awesome. Just do more of it. I don't judge, but if you are stuck, um, Alexandra Nicole, decluttering and organizing your garage with your neighbor this morning. Rock on. I wish you all the best. I want you to get as much done as you can, and I also want you to have fun doing it. And then I also want you to kind of clock out, you know, when you when it starts to be, you know, draggy and unfun, and you're starting to get crabby and cranky and, you know, whatever. And I want you to do something fun and good for yourself today, okay? So I can do this. All right. Yeah, she's no longer with you, TYAA, in the world. Trust me. This is why we have our, our hearts. This is where the people who are no longer here on the physical plane, this is where they live, right? Because even when she was around, if she wasn't in, in sight, she lived in your heart. You had stories and memories and feelings that she brought up. Her body's not here, but her spirit lives on, okay? So now Glory West is saying... Um, Oh, thank you. That one persona is saying off topic, but I love the decorations above your window. Let me think. Okay, so let me, what do we get right here? So over here, so this is a window here. These are actually um, like, you know, it's funny. I swear to God, we've had these uh, paper lanterns since our wedding or very close. So 20 years or so, I we hung paper lanterns outside. This is a little um, diorama that I bought off of some woman that I was, when I was doing um, vintage things, see, everything, I will, I will stop myself, but everything in my house has a story. Everything has meaning, various meanings, but it has a story. So thank you for liking it. I like it, and that's why when I do my TikTok Lives, I like to kind of give you d different glimpses. Because what it also shows you is a decluttered house doesn't have to be minimalist, doesn't have to be boring and beige. It can be whatever you want it to be. This is what I wanted our house to look like. Voila, here it is. Um... Okay, Tammy Donaldson is saying, tomorrow is my mom's death date, 26 years. I don't know how to honor her. Here, you know what? Honor her by doing something that uses what she does not have, which is life. Do something tomorrow that, that helps you live a life that you love. Do something good for yourself. I don't want to say buy yourself something, but you know what? Do something to celebrate what you have that she doesn't have. Because this is how I imagine it. And I know I'm going deep, but it's come up a couple of times already. And I had a friend pass away last week. So I'm kind of, that's kind of where my, my spirit is at right now is this, you know, as the Smiths would say, in the midst of life, we are in death, etc. cetera, um, is the people who are no longer with us are looking down on us from heaven. This is how I think of it. And on the earth, we only have a limited view of what's going on. You know that word enlightenment? Sometimes I think when we die, our spirits kind of get their eyes open and you're like, oh, I see the big picture, I get it now. Oh, all the things that I thought were so important on, my, on, the, on, the, um, on the planet, so much of that stuff was like so irrelevant, so didn't matter, but what mattered was life and love. Love. Now I'm gonna start thinking about that song by Nat King Cole about the nature boy. I'm gonna think about my dad and oh my God, it's you know five past 10 in the morning and I'm crying. So I won't do that, but I can feel it here. It's okay. But 
Honor your own life, even if nobody has passed. What can you do today to embrace the life you have, to do something you want to do, to, to say, where is something not working for me and do something to change that, okay? You know? Um, okay, so that is, I'm a life coach, my, I'm, and I always forget to introduce myself at the very beginning because I'm always yada yada yada. My name is Beth. My name is Beth. I should be rapping now. Uh, my name is Beth. I am a decluttering life coach. My coaching is called Destination Decluttered, both here on TikTok and on um, the interwebs, destinationdecluttered.com. I primarily do one-on-one -on -one coaching with people over Zoom, so no matter where you live in the continental United States and beyond, you know, you and I can work together for paid coaching, but I also do these TikTok lives. I have a, a wonderful group of people that are on the mailing list, um, all sorts of fun things. Um, oh, everybody's crying and change can be scary, but you know what? You know what's even scarier is not changing and getting to your deathbed and saying, fuck, I should have done something. I should have, at that point right there, I had a change. I had a chance in February 24th of 2024 to do something different. Even incrementally, incrementally doing something different now can make a difference in the long run and in the short term too. Ooh, that's, thank you for the tea. It's hot, wicked hot, Johnny. Um, okay, I know we went deep, but here, we're, we're gonna paddle over. This is why I love what I do because it is the deep and the shallow in all the places in between the, the, the swimming pool, okay? Um, uh, we, I, wanna, I wanna help you with clutter. I can help you with the other stuff too, but decluttering reminds you of the things you can do, the actions you can take. If you feel like you don't know what to do to get your life looking and feeling better, or you don't know what steps to take, let's start small. Let's start with decluttering your home. That will give you experience with having ideas, taking action, and noticing a difference, a positive difference, okay? So Glory West, I would ask you if we were one-on-one -on -one coaching, every time I try to clutter, I get very depressed. So get curious about it. When you get very depressed, that's obviously a feeling, but the feeling probably comes along with words in your head, thoughts. Um, what I like to call sometimes your backseat driver thoughts is those, those thoughts in your head that make you feel depressed. The act of decluttering itself is kind of like, look, oops, like, look, I got this. I got to put it back where it belongs. Oh, I don't want this. I'm throwing it away. Oh, this is good, but I don't want it anymore. I'm going to donate it somebody, to somebody. Um, the, the act itself is very non-judgmental. It's the thoughts that we have that give it feeling, that give it meaning, that either keep us stuck and not doing it or get us going and moving along. I know this from personal experience and from my clients. So um, notice that. Ask yourself and then write this stuff down. I know it may seem weird and it's not, it's not papers that you need to keep. You can burn them afterwards. Write down those, un, those unhelpful thoughts because when you write them down, you can see them from a distance and you can say, is this really true? What would I rather think instead of this? I'm always talking about kind of like, oh, it's funny. Do I have, here, you know what? This is what I get for being a TikTok live and it's, you know, live from the Hacienda. Hold on. So this is, this is the house. This is the room in our house where we have our record player. Um, and so I like to think of the, the flip side, okay? So on the one side of your hand, if, on the one side, you may have always been listening just to those thoughts in your head that are unhelpful, that are based in fear, that are discouraging, and not motivating. That's only one side. Let's see what I did here? Oops. That's only one side. Anybody, you, you youngins, you may not know what this is. It's only one song. That's only, there's always another side. There's a, there's a flip side. See what I did there, a flip side? You can flip the record. There's another story. There's another side. On the other side here is thoughts of encouragement based in love and curiosity and compassion and encouragement. Now, this, this song over here, these backseat drivers, the backseat driver song, right? Um, this comes unbidden. This is how our brains are wired. But if you only listen to this song, it's kind of like listening to the Smiths when you're going through a breakup. Boy, I wish I hadn't done that. I would have saved years of my life, but I digreg. <laughs> if I had listened to different songs, if I had listened to different words, maybe I needed to write the song the opposite of what I was listening to when you think better, when you feel better, 
because you hear better words when you get encouraged, then you get motivated and you're more likely to take an action that isn't just random though, that leads you in the direction you want, okay? So think of this, like Davy Jones said to Marsha Brady on that crazy episode of the Brady Bunch, how about the flip side? So I say to you, as Beth the decluttering Gen X life coach who watched a wicked lot of TV growing up and especially those reruns on channel 56, how about the flip side? What is the flip side of the stuff that's keeping you depressed? Write that stuff down too. Okay, so Chemist is saying, dreading to declutter a storage unit of a previous move. Okay, dread. Notice, I am dreading it. Why are you dreading it? It's a nice repeatable process if you think about it. Well, I'm dreading it because there's so much stuff there and it's a lot of it. I'm overwhelmed. I feel like whatever. Okay, overwhelm. We can, the opposite of overwhelm, the flip side of overwhelm is chunking it down, slowing down, chunking it down, over to down, okay? Just get started. As my dad would say, and again, this is how my brain works, so I just kind of channel whatever's coming out of my brain. This is all extemporaneous. Bunny Berrigan, he was a little trumpet player guy in the 30s, 40s maybe. I just can't get started with you, you know? Get started with yourself, okay? Get started. Life is short. We are learning that every freaking day. I am older today. You know, I love you more today than yesterday, but not as much as tomorrow. Love that song. But also think, yesterday I was younger than I am today. I mean, I know there's another song that goes like something like that. Um, but anyhow, let me take a sip. 13 new mentresses. Yeah. Seriously, Terry, the flip side con concept is a game changer. When I coach people, and I'm, I'm giving you a lot of the tips that I use on one-on-one -on -one coaching right now, because why would I gatekeep this? It has helped me. I want it to help you. The one thing that one-on-one -on -one coaching, though, gets you is being so specific and pinpointing exactly where you get tripped up, where you get stuck. But what I always say to my clients is take a piece of paper, fold it in half. You have two columns, right? One column, the one on the left-hand side, write down all those unhelpful thoughts, that probably weren't even yours to begin with. They're probably in somebody else's voice, but we get, you know, we'll get into that. Write all those things down, and that line in the middle is kind of the line, the flip side. On the other hand, what would I rather think? What would I rather feel? What is even just, if you think you're a, like, pretend you're an English major, what is the opposite of this thought? I can't do it. The opposite of that is, I can do it. You know, this is, there's so much stuff here. You know, there's not as much as I think. There's not, you know, anything that's dramatic and holds you back. Get really curious about that, okay? Oh, thank you. Tammy Donaldson said, I love your mug. Now, this is not a shameless plug, but I will say I've made this mug for myself because this mantra right here, every little bit helps. And look, I even put my own logo on it because I'm experimenting with doing merch. But um, this helps me, especially even me. I mean, I'm a, I'm a human, I'm a life coach, and a, and a, but I'm a human. So some days I am not doing as much as I think I should be doing. Why am I dragging? Why am I moving so slowly? And I have to remind myself. And when I tell myself, this is like a, this is a, this right here is a, is a flip side thought. This is, shh, it's okay. Every little bit helps. Doesn't that make you feel like you just want to do a little bit? Even now I'm looking at some dishes on the, on the counter and some little dribs and drabs. I can do that. I may not be kicking the world's ass today, but I'm gonna get some little stuff done. And when I feel better, I will do better. And I will be happy with whatever progress I make, okay? Okay, I love it. Annalisa is, I'm, I gotta scroll back in a minute. Annalisa is saying, wanted to tell you I can walk freely in my garage this week. Oh my gosh. Everybody, give Annalisa a high five and a, and a Liz Lemon, you know, one-handed high five, okay? Yeah, dibbles, yeah, say it all out loud. Saying it out loud is good, but getting it down onto paper so you can really be like, whoa, is that what's really, is that what really is in there? No wonder I'd be like, who wouldn't feel like crap if somebody said that to them, you know? There we go, there we go, painting of a duck. I feel a little bit more motivated just to do something today now, good. That's all you need, that's all you need. A little something, something, you know? It, it helps that knowing how to do this. When I show up and do this, it's kind of like Pavlov's dog. I was saying yesterday, am I the dog or the dog food or the bell? I guess I'm the bell because then it makes you want to go declutter. But I do this to, to teach you how to do it for yourself. So for the rest of your life, when you're feeling like a glum chum, I was kind of glum woken up this morning, but I said, okay, what can I do? So I took a shower. Sometimes taking that shower is a major thing. 
Um, so I was like, yes, I took a shower. I put on a wee bit of makeup. Um, I went out for a walk, not a long walk because I wanted to do a TikTok live, but I'm going to go out for a walk. I made some plans and my plan for the day included some little things to do. Now, I will say this from the other side of decluttering. It is a game changer to wake up on a Saturday morning and look around your house and say, wow, we do not have to spend the day on a major dig out or project or laundry or garage or basement. We've got some piddly little things, but it is awesome to realize that we have a weekend ahead of us that we don't have to do any chores. I want your life to have that too. You know, that's what I do. This is what I do with the coaching, okay? So I'm scrolling back here. Um, let's see if anything I missed. Um, what do we got here? Uh, there we go. Gail Haddock Lewis says, I have been decluttering and it's been extremely therapeutic. Notice how we went there, people. Therapeutic and actually fun. Yes. Oh my God. If it ain't fun, I'm not getting it done. Trust me. And how can you make it fun for yourself? Chunk it down. Put on some music. Pretend there's a force field around the doors. Um, pretend you're decorating somebody else's house. Are you going shopping in your house? Would you buy this again? If you were at, pretend you're not even at your own house and you're at, let's say, a, an estate sale. Would you, what would you be picking up to buy and what would you say, I'm not buying that? You know? Hey, German May 95 said, went through um, one shelf last night and already gave away 10 books. Awesome. Awesome. I love that. Speaking of giving away books, I don't know if we will get to books, but you guys know how a couple of weeks ago I was at my mother's house in New England um, helping her with paperwork and things. Um, so I called her yesterday, you know, helping her with, again, the paperwork long distance. And she said to me, and she's been cluttered all her life. She's in her 80s now. And I went a couple of years ago and helped her do a lot of decluttering in the house. And um, she said to me yesterday on the phone, yeah, well, I'm still really overwhelmed by the amount of stuff I have in our, my, my closets. And I'm, I'm using this story, I'm sharing this story for a reason, is because a couple of years ago, I went through those closets with her and we donated literally over 20 bags of clothing to this um, donation thing that her Sweet Adeline's Chorus was doing. That was wonderful. She thought at that point, 2022 or 2021, whenever it was, probably between the two, oh, maybe I will be wearing some of these clothes. So two years have passed and she's discovered, you know what, I'm not wearing those clothes that I thought I was gonna wear. And she even said to me, she said, yeah, you know, it's kind of sad to realize that that certain, that certain chapter of your life is over where I may not be wearing that kind of clothing anymore. I may not be going to a fancy thing. So it's time to, to, to let that stuff go and maybe somebody else enjoy it. So I'm gonna go up in the next you know, few months and stuff and continue that process. Now I share that because what she did was she thought in the past, she could let some stuff go, but now time has passed and she's really realizing what her life is now. And now she's ready to, you know, um, declutter some more. It's not a one and done process. It takes layers and it takes time. And it takes time for you to get a comfortable with who you were, who you are, and who you anticipate you're gonna be in the future, you know? So think about that. I, I'm sorry, German made because my mother collects books like nobody's business. She also, I'm pretty much sure she has ADHD because she buys a ton of books, but I've never seen her read a one. And it's heartbreaking, but I love her. Um, so when we clean out her house in 20 years when she passes, um, we're going to be giving away a lot of free books. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Beth Whitley, right. The, the Smith's always a mistake when you are down. I mean, yeah, trust me. I got a whole story about that, but you know what? We live, we learn, you know, and we do something better the next time. Okay. What else do we have? Oh, Erin says, I want that mug. I can hook you up, lady. Oh, and here's the thing too. So on one side, it says every little bit helps. And then it's not too hot. This right here. So when you're overwhelmed, I want you to think of this, what I, what I call all the downs. And I thought it'd be fun. Like when you're overwhelmed at your desk to just have the staring at you to slow down, slow down. What else do I have to breathe down? Even right now, if, even if we all took a collective deep breath and breathed down into the bottom of our lungs, and you slowed down, and what's the next one? I'm reading it backwards here. Write it down. Write down the unhelpful stuff. Write down the stuff you want to do. Write, get the stuff down out of your head onto paper, and then chunk it down. You can't go on a road trip. You can't hit the road to drive from 
Pennsylvania to Palm Springs and expect to get there. You have to take it a chunk at a time, an hour at a time, a day at a time, a mile at a time. That's how you get to anywhere of value. And so doing this will help your nervous system and um, encourage you to get going and getting going in the direction you want to get to. Okay? There we go. All right. Oh, good. It's cool to let people know that you want. I will let you know. I will say this. Um, good to know people are interested in the mugs. Um, when I decide to put merch out, um, the people who are going to get the first dibs on it will be people on the Destination Decluttered email mailing list. So if you're interested in that, destinationdecluttered.com. Dot com, Johnny. God, what is it, Jay? It's a baby whale. <laughs> um, destinationdecluttered.com slash join. Boom. There we go. Uh-huh. All right. Feeling motivated. Sounds good. High fives. Um, oh, thank you for, you know what? Thank you, Beth. Thank you for letting me know that me kind of revealing myself um, of what I'm struggling with or just where my life is at helps you because I'm a, I know it may sound weird to you guys. It's kind of weird to me too. The, the, the fact that I can kind of easily get onto TikTok and because I'm just in my kitchen talking to my phone and connect with people. It's a bit of an abstract concept, but in life I am fairly, I am pretty much an introvert. I can spend hours happily puttering around myself, doing little things. I'm not a big group person and I'm also a fairly private person. But I realize that if I, can, if I can share a little bit about what's going on with me, you'll know that I'm just another person on the planet struggling with my own stuff, but also found some stuff that works. We are all a combination of the stuff that works and the stuff that doesn't. But the cool thing is, is late in life, but, but I'm glad it happened, is I clued into what I could do to change the things that were bugging me. And man, when I get the positive results and the more I do this, the easier it is to have a life that I love and it's effortless. Not effortless, but it's so much less effort than I thought it would be and it's fun, so I do it more. What do I want to happen? And I do it, you know? There we go, painting of a duck said, doing a little bit at a time versus a huge cleanup where I lose momentum has been a game changer for me. Yes, that's why even on these days of the weekend, you guys, seriously, chunk down what you are planning on doing today. Say I'm gonna work for two hours in the, in the garage and then I'm gonna take a break. I'm gonna go for a walk, I'm gonna sit down, I'm gonna have a cup of iced, a gla you know, glass of iced tea. I'm only gonna do it for two hours and then anything that I'm donating, I'm gonna go drive to the donation place and do it. And then I'm gonna spend some time doing something fun. I will never, eat, as a one-on-one -on -one coach, as a human, say to yourself, don't do something that you wanna to do to do something you have to do. You can do the both. On a day that you wanna go out and play, you can go out and play, but you can also spend 15 or 20 minutes decluttering. You know, instead of avoiding it, you can do the both and, as they used to say, you know? So get the stuff done, but also go have some fun. I'm, can you tell I'm experimenting with that? I don't know where that's going, but I like the done and fun rhyme. I'm all about rhymes. I'm all about alliteration. And I wasn't even an English major. Then I'm all about acronyms. So let's see, alliteration. Alliteration, when something has the three letters that are all the same, surface clutter, stored clutter, sentimental clutter. Um, an acronym. Acronym is when the first letters are the, the same thing. So bus. I got, a, I got an email from an earlier, a client I had a number of years ago who said to this day, this is one of those things that stuck with me, bus. Is it beautiful? Do I think it's beautiful? Do I think it's useful? Do I think it's sentimental? Does it hit one of those things? If I'm deciding what to, if should it, you know, as the, as the clash would say, should I stay or should I go now? Should I keep it? Should I let it go? Do I think it's beautiful? Do I think it's useful? Do I think it's, crap, I forgot, sentimental. Running yourself, asking yourself some questions to get a better idea of why am I hanging on to this thing? And then what was the last one? I don't know. Rhyming. You know, destination declutter doesn't rhyme, but have fun, get it done. Boom. There we go. Uh-huh. Oh, good. Good to know about the, the mugs. Thank you, people. I don't want to clutter up your house, though. So I may do something silly like if you order a mug, you need to promise to, to donate two mugs you don't like so much to, like, um, a thrift store or something. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? Oh, Miss Julie, just listening to you makes me feel hopeful. Good. Thank you for letting me know that because I know first freaking hand the difference between feeling discouraged and encouraged, feeling hopeless and hopeful. And so if I can be on the flip side and I can encourage you and making you have hope, 
it doesn't last. Like it's a temporary thing. So you, 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 you need to find out how to generate it. But even if it's just, you know, hanging out with me and learning that there's a different way you can speak to other people and to yourself, that gives you the opportunity to quiet down. I'm always like shushing the backseat drivers. You know, I'm driving in the car, shh, quiet down there. You, you kids who just want me to keep on driving through the drive through shh, when they quiet down, this is what I call your co-pilot voice, is your voice in you that says, you got this, you can do it. Where do you wanna go? What do you wanna do with this one life you have? You wanna do that? Cool, sounds good to me, let's do it. I have some ideas, I can help you with that. That's who I am as a coach for you. And I love it. I love it. I love helping people make dreams come true. Now I'm going to start to sing the, um, <laughs> the, the Vernon Shirley theme song, right? But seriously thinking about it, having somebody in the car, you're the driver, but sometimes you get distracted. Sometimes you don't even start. Sometimes you listen to the backseat drivers and you drive your life towards where they want you to go instead of where you want to go. Trust me. Remember when I was talking about listening to the Smiths in my twenties? Um, boy, did a lot of my twenties was me driving my life towards where I thought everybody else wanted me to, you know? <laughs> right, limit one month per person. <laughs> right. So Lucy is saying, oh no, Josephine, I will say this. Okay, so Josephine, real quick. Um, I think I killed my co-pilot last week. No, here's the thing. This is how I, this is how, this is a way of explaining things. I love metaphor too, it's because it just gives... It explains, uh, you know, difficult concepts or not abstract concepts in a way that makes sense. So this is how it makes sense to me. I am a driver in a car in the drive. I am in the past. I am in the driver's seat from the time I was born to the time I died. I am in the driver's seat. I've got my hands on the steering wheel so I can steer in any direction. I can get in gear or I can stay stuck. I can push on the gas. I can lean back. I can, you know, dr drive directly to a place or I can get distracted. All that stuff. However, I'm not the only person in the car. I have my backseat drivers who want to discourage me. They're the kind of the unhelpfuls. And then I have the more helpful, which is my co-pilot with the map and the plan and the encouragement. All three of us, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, <laughs> you know, all three of us are in the car for the entirety that we're here. Um, I think of sometimes if you are a religious person, maybe your co-pilot, you know, remember those like uh, license plates you would see at like south of the border, like God is my co-pilot. Maybe God's your co-pilot. I think it's an inner voice that is the voice of pure love and encouragement. It says, I love you so much, I want you to have the life you want to live before you don't, before you don't live it anymore, okay? Um, there we go. Oh, GB, it was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. Hun, that sucks. But started getting rid of the stuff and it's healing. Yeah, because you realize this stuff doesn't mean a damn. What matters is your health and your, and your life, okay? Um, now, Lucy was asking, um, saying, I have heard that trauma is what leads to a person being cluttered as an adult. Is this true? depends on the person. It can be. Um, it can't be. Um, I actually was somewhat resistant to this concept of generational trauma, but I will say this. Trauma to me is a very loaded and dramatic word. I like to look at it as this. We are brought up by people who were brought up by people who were brought up by people. And depending upon who you were brought up with and when you were brought up with them and how and all that kind of stuff, you learned, you were taught both both consciously and unconsciously about how to deal with stuff or not deal with stuff or think and feel about stuff. And so if you grew up in a household where the person who was raising you didn't know how to organize or didn't have a lot of money and then came into a lot of money so they could buy the things that they used to want, but they still didn't, still didn't know how to deal with it. And then there's, a, there's stuff behind that. I would say hoarding, hoarding when you can't even walk through somebody's house, that has definitely, definitely a mental health component to it. Um, the good news is for people of that, you know, what do I want? Okay, like that severity of clutter, I'm not your person. I'm not. I have tried to be for people that I've seen struggle with that. I am not that person. However, people that are hoarding, there is mental health help, health help out there because um, hoarding is a diagnosis in the DSM-5. So you can get help with that. The cool thing is, is so many of us are afraid to be called hoarders. We're not. We just weren't taught how to deal with stuff in a way that gives us the life we want. We think we are supposed to buy, we are supposed to go out and make money to buy things, but then 
making the money takes the life away from us, but then we buy the things, but then the things don't make us happy. So then we think, oh, I just bought the wrong things. I need to buy more things. This is the wrong thing. I'm not happy because I don't have the right things. And what I want to offer to you is, as my mother would say, I mean, she, trust me, my mother is a smart cookie. And even at, at you know, 83, she is sharp as a freaking tack. But she always said to us, consider the source. Who is telling you you need to go buy something that's going to make you feel better? That's the people that's selling the stuff. Now, trust me, you could say, well, you're selling something. You're selling paid coaching. Trust me, I know that. But my, what I sell isn't a thing. It is a different way of thinking and feeling and doing that will change your life and you get it for the rest of your life. It's not something that takes up space. And it's a different thing. But notice things. Things get in your way. When you don't have things in your way, you have time and freedom and space and flexibility. Who doesn't want that? <laughs> All right. <clears throat> yeah, there we go. Boomer, Boomer 9254 hit it right on the head. Didn't have stuff, didn't have shit growing up. Many people didn't. It's the context. I was, a, I was an art history major, so I tend to look at things from a historical perspective. Didn't have shit growing up. New clothes were often hand-me-downs. Now I have more shit than I needed. Yeah, because you're trying to make up for the fact that when you were a little kid, you didn't have enough. Yeah. I know that firsthand because I am second generation of that. You know, my, my people, my people came over in the potato famines. My family didn't have a lot of money. Um, my dad did okay. My mom did okay. They were the first of their entire families. They kind of did all right. But they came from not, they weren't used to that. They were used to not having a lot. So my mother saves these plastic containers all the time. I do the same thing myself. I have learned to be okay with recycling some stuff, you know. Um, but notice that. Good morning from Texas. Grace, nice to see you. But yes, oh, um, I'm so sorry that Akariya Tantra, I apologize. I don't know how to pronounce your name correctly, but I, I tried at least. You just lost your 86-year-old dad. I'm sorry, hon. I am. That sucks. That does. So hugs from me to you, okay? I would hug a freaking stranger because I know that feeling, you know? Um, treat yourself kindly. Give yourself grace, 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 grace all over the place, okay? And do it. Um, all right. Yeah, this is the other thing too. Thank you for painting of a duck to bring up this thing. Is uh, also, no one ever taught me how to declutter. Right here, I didn't know how to declutter. How could I know how to declutter? Because my mother didn't know how to declutter because her mother didn't know how to declutter. I know how I can teach you. And it's never too late. It actually, you know what, sometimes I will say this, in all honesty, I have so much more of an appreciation of how my house looks and what my life looks like now because for decades I lived in the opposite. I was cluttered, I was discouraged, I was scared, all that kind of stuff. I have so much more of an appreciation for what I have now, which is less than I had then. I mean, I have so much fewer, so many fewer items, but because I know what it's like to be on the other side, okay? If you were not taught how to declutter and or or if you were taught in those systems and those processes take too freaking long, my God, I am such a fan of simplification. I got an award actually when I, I didn't want to work in corporate America ever, but when you got to pay a mortgage, you do the things you have to do. I got an award a couple of times during my tenure at my corporate job um, in, you know, streamlining and process stuff because I can see redundancy. I can see where things can be made easier. And I like things when they're easy. I don't want things to be too complicated. If something's too complicated, I bail. And so I just want to offer to you, if you don't know how to clutter, I'm your person. I can teach you. And then you'll have the skill for the rest of your life. Kind of like driving a car. I always think of that driver. You didn't know how to do something. You got some help. You paid somebody. Maybe you practiced, you did it. And now it's a skill you have for the rest of your life. That's why I'm so cool about how much I charge for coaching, which I will not divulge here, um, but it's not, I mean, trust me, it's, it's a, I've been told it's a crazy bargain. I feel good about it because I want to help as many people as I can, um, but I also need to, you know, support myself. Um, but I just offer this because when you learn a skill and you practice it with somebody there, you can get better tips, you can see, and then you can see it and you get encouragement and then you start to do it yourself. It's like getting your driver's license. You weren't the best driver when you got your license, but you've practiced, 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 
And now it is a habit of just living the way you live. Okay. All right. What do we got here? Enough, enough about me. There we go. Yep. Um, yeah, there we go. A strong silver soul sister says that was my life. Scarcity mindset. Yes. We don't have enough. What if, oh my gosh, I can't let this go. What if I need a, a jar and I, I don't have a jar? That was, that shit was real people. That shit was real for people who went through the great depression. But the Great Depression was at a time where our country did not have the capabilities to manufacture and deliver all the shit that we can get, that gets manufactured and delivered now. Never mind our country. How about the world? Stuff getting flown over from China and droned to your house and you hit a button and it, it, get, it gets delivered before the end of my call? That's when you realize that we, you know, it's like the, when everything's at your fingertips, you have to be extra careful about what you what you bring in. And that's that's a life lesson. You have to learn that yourself. You know? Yes, and that mantra, I am enough and have enough. Doesn't that feel good? Say those fine things to yourself. I saw a TikTok this morning, because I probably, like you, was in bed this morning scrolling on the TikTok because it was gray out and I didn't want to get up. Find some good words that, that have some resonance to yourself and repeat them over and over again. Okay? How about this? I just thought of this and I don't know how many I have. So I will say, I, I'm just going to just qualify this with this. For people who sign up for the Destination Decluttered mailing list today. Oh, this sounds kind of infomercially, but seriously, I'm totally making this up in my head. Um, when you get the automatic email, you will get it from an email address. If you reply to that email address, um, I will send you information on how to get a sticker. I, this totally is not planned, but I know I have some stickers because I was experimenting with stickers. Like this is a mantra that helps me. Every little bit helps. And if you want a free sticker, you just need to send me a self-addressed stamped envelope. If you sign up on the mailing list today, or if you're on the mailing list already and you um, didn't get a sticker, but now you've changed your mind, I have a finite amount of them. Um, that I'm going to just give away for free. I'll, I will charge for them later at some point. I don't know. But if you want a sticker that says every little bit helps, if you feel like that would help you, um, sign up for the mailing list, reply to the, um, excuse me, to the welcome email, and I will let you know how to get one. Okay? How's that sound? I hope that helps you. All right. There we go. Um, okay. Sorry. Mama Pepper is asking about tips on organizing cosmetics, please. Yes. Okay. First of all, pay attention to the stuff you use every day. You're using, you have the stuff. This is, and this isn't just cosmetics, everybody. This is for everything. You have stuff you use all the time. You have your mascara and you've got your lipstick and you've got whatever your, your major, your, your everyday wear is. Look and see the quality and quantity of what you have in that, in that kind of group, right? Then you've got, after you pull that stuff out and put it aside, take a look at the other um, stuff you have and categorize it. Now, I like to do this. I don't, as you can see, I don't wear a lot of makeup, but I do have some, and I know I've got my kind of everyday wear that fits in this tiny little pouch because it's just not my deal to wear a lot of makeup. And I also have some that are kind of like for special occasions. And I, seriously, my special occasion makeup is probably like more like Halloween. But take a look at the stuff you don't use. Take a look at that right now and see if it is even still good. I mean, I think, I kind of call... BS sometimes on when people say that things expire longer than they do, like the Arm & Hammer baking soda people being like, oh, replace this after 30 days. I'm like, yeah, you just are trying to get me to buy 12 boxes of baking soda to put in my thing. So, however, I bet you all, all of us have had a lipstick that we thought we were going to use and then it didn't quite work out. And you're like, well, maybe I'll use this, you know, at Christmas or something. And then you go to use it and, you, you, and, and it's all kind of crumbly and separated because the oils especially foods and cosmetics are unstable. They, do, they have a short shelf life. So look at the stuff. Look for, first of all, organize your stuff by like, you know, here's all my lipsticks, here's all my mascaras, here's all my eyeshadows, here's all my whatever. And then say to yourself, does this even, would I even want to use this? Here's an interesting thing you will find is I'm a betcha that a lot of the stuff that you don't use on the daily a lot of that stuff is stuff that you, you bought, and this is a process, you, bought, you see something out there. Oh, look at that lipstick. I think that might work for me. You go, you buy it. Then you come home and you try it on. Immediately there, right then, you say, oh, ooh, this works for me. I like this color, I'm keeping it. 
Or you say, mm, this is a little kind of orangey. I don't know if I'm gonna use this all the time, but maybe I will later. Maybe this is more of like a summer pink versus a, a winter red, okay? So then you have the stuff that you thought you were gonna use every day, and then you put it aside thinking, I'm gonna use this later. Ask yourself if you're using it later. If you are, that's cool. Again, I say ask yourself these questions. The answer is not for me. I don't judge, and I, I mean, it, it, in a way, it has no effect on my life, but I want you to listen to your I want you to listen to your response. Why aren't you, whoa, because that's bright red. I don't want to wear bright red during the summer, but I'm going to use that at Christmas. Um, oh yeah, no, I, immediately when I got home, it looked so orange, it looked good in the store, but I couldn't tell. The sooner you realize something is not working for you, cosmetics, dishes, anything you've purchased, the best way to not have a clutter up your house is to realize that thing and say, oh well, lesson learned, and move it out of your home as soon as possible. When you keep things singing, well, it's not exactly, but I'm scarcity because what if I need a lipstick and I, pen I spent good money on this? Talk about a scarcity mindset type thing. I wasted money. You're going to waste money for the rest of your life on things that just don't work out for you. What you're wasting, though, is you living a life that's cluttered. You're wasting your beautiful life. Be, hang be hanging around with stuff that just doesn't do it for you. Okay? So I hope that helps, Mama Pepper. Okay? There we go. Okay, Lucy is talking about my problem is getting rid of items that my family has given me over the years. Yes, notice that when I was talking about surface clutter, stored clutter, sentimental. Sentimental, stuff that has stories, those can be hard to deal with, especially if it's stuff you don't like. If it's stuff you like, you're, you're fine. It's the stuff you don't like. Notice what's important to you. And here's one of the things that I want to offer, and I've said this to my mother, just because you don't like their stuff or the stuff that they gave you doesn't mean you don't like them. Just because you love them also does not mean you need to love the stuff that they want to give you or have given you. What is not fun is looking around your house and instead of going, love it, 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 Lyle, love it. <laughs> love, 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 exciting and new. Looking around your house and saying, I love all this stuff. When you're looking around going, ugh, 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 mm, yeah. Your body, your, your brain does that all the time on a split second neurological level. When you look around and you love your stuff, you're filled with love. When you look around and go, ugh, you're filled with ugh, okay? How to get over the disgust of wasting? Get realistic that it's gonna happen. Have some grace, give yourself a break. As I like to say, put it into perspective. Now, trust me, I am all about making the best with what you have and trying to, you know, trust me, I'm always like, let's use up that, you know, that shampoo before we get another one. You know, I am all about that. And when we use the shampoo, recycle it. So I'm not saying put everything in the trash, people just, but right now, there's probably a plane going over my house right now that has done more damage to the earth than all of us together will do in our lifetimes. So put it into perspective, give yourself a break and don't, use up your energy and um, freak out about, um, about, sorry, my husband's walking around and I got distracted, um, about wasting things. You have wasted stuff in the past. You will do it probably today and you're going to do it in the future. Cut yourself some slack. Do the best you can with what you have, but make your life the best you can. And if your problem is with waste, get really curious about what you're bringing into your house. You know, notice that. Um, do to do, do. Okay, there we go. Oh, Grace says, I love your earrings. Where did you buy them? I will say this. She's on um, TikTok here. I don't know if she'll do custom orders, but I, have a, I, I will say this. One of the things that's wonderful about when you start to live a life you love is one of the things that I want to say I've collected, but I love in my life more than I, I is my friends. I have such awesome and creative friends, and I had a friend make these for me. Some of you who've been with me for a while know that I had a shorter pair and one of them broke and, and my, my friend Marianne made them for me. And so for Christmas, I said to my husband, you know what I would really like? Um, I would really like a glamorous pair. Now these technically, these are kind of my evening wear ones, but she's making me a shorter kind of everyday wear version. Um, but yeah, my, my friend Marianne made these. So thank you, I will let her know. Okay, there we go. Grace, do your best. And even if you're not doing your best, do better than you did yesterday. Best to me is like, just do your best. And then you're like, did I do my best today? It's like, instead of going for the A plus all the time, a B, a B minus, a B plus, B minus, Pam, B minus. <laughs> you 
B minus is fine. Do better than yesterday. Do a little bit better than yesterday. And if even if you didn't do your best, you're still you're still doing okay. There we go. Oh, there we go. Yes, somebody um, somebody says uh, saw really cute Corel uh, earrings made from broken plates. Yeah, there's somebody whose name escapes me, but Joe Retro. This is awesome shop in Haver de Grace, Maryland. I don't know if she's on TikTok. Joe Retro, J O R E T R O. And there's somebody she's worked with that's done some great stuff with Pyrex and stuff. Okay, there we go. Yeah, Erin, right there, right back at you, lady. I collect awesome people. Yes, I love it. Um, all right, yeah. A lot of people slowly change their choices. A lot of people who love low waste products, yeah. Um, there's see, there's all these little micro things you can do. That think about two years ago, if you had started to do something, um, it's so funny. I have a friend who's texting me and I'm only gonna be on for nine minutes, but um, I was just in Palm Springs, one of my favorite places, and she's going to Palm Springs, so she's peppering me with questions. Dal, I'll get back to you in a minute. Um, but think about if this time last year, if you had started to have coaching with me or just even started to declutter your house and you kept up with it a little bit at a time, think of how different your house would look. That was the past, 2023 to now, 2024. Let's do this, that the past, the present, and the future. Let's do some time traveling. So, so February 24th of 2025, what do you want to feel? How, what do you want to look at? And what do you want to feel when you're looking around your house? How do you want your house to look? And I say house, but I mean home. It could be apartment, but that's where my, my brain goes. It falls into the house rut. What do you want your home to look like this time next year when you're looking around? Now, the cool thing is with me, the sun came out. I'm wicked excited. I am one of those people who it feels better. I feel better when the sun is out. Um, what do I want to look around? Cool thing is, is I want to see things pretty much as they are. I look around, I don't see much that needs improving. Right now I see, you know, some laundry that needs to be folded and I see a bag of clothes that I need to give to the um, thrift store. And I see a heating pad that I need to wrap up and put in a box, um, some dishes that need to be done. But other than that, I love what I look at. I love right here what I'm doing, I'm, I'm, I'm helping you guys. I want you to do the same thing for you. And if you want it to be like that next year, start really small now. You know, that's how it works. Don't freak yourself out by being all declarative and I'm going to change my life. Do it in a way that doesn't activate, that doesn't freak out your nervous system to go, wow, too many changes and I shut down. Baby steps help you do that. And think about babies. Babies knew that, that babies have this thing. They, they, you know, they get knocked down and their little butts and they get up, up again. They're a bit like the little tiny chumbawambas, you know, and, you know, get down, they get back up again. You know, oh, I didn't do so great yesterday. I didn't do, I didn't do so great yesterday. Actually, yesterday I did pretty great. But a couple of days ago, I was sick. I didn't do so well. Okay, no, love yourself throughout the whole process. But then when you feel better, you're going to do better. When I felt better physically, I did better. I showed up better. You know, even right now, honestly, me, I woke up kind of sad. My friend, it's been a week since she passed. Um, you know, I started getting all teary-eyed when I was watching uh, The Midwives and the grandma died. And I know it's because of being reminded about the shortness of all of our lives. But I said, okay, what can I do right now to make myself feel incrementally better? Taking a shower can be a game changer, but I know it can be a big step. But take that, step yourself into the shower and take a shower. Go out and get some fresh air. Go move your body. Drink some water. All those things, all those baby things. I took some vitamins. I had a cup of tea. Thanks, hon. Um, do some baby steps to make yourself feel better and then sit down with a pad of paper next to you or a little notebook. I might do some notebooks too, we'll just say. And what do I want my home to look and feel like even this time next year? That's your destination. And then say, okay, what can I do today? Don't, don't push it off because as soon as you start on that wonderful road trip towards that, you're on your way. For misery to happiness today, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Gen X, can't help it. Um, you can do this a little bit at a time every day as what's his name said at that thing we went to, aren't I so vague? John, what was his name? The guy, John Stewart, we went to a rally every damn day, every damn day, doing a little bit every damn day. Can you imagine even five minutes a day between now and next year, your house would look and feel different. You would feel different because your house looks different. You would be a different person and you would be incrementally changing yourself into the person who just lives in a house that looks like you want it to, okay? So, um, 
There we go. Grace. And I love it. Your name gives it some grace. There we go. Yeah, notebooks. Yeah, Erin. You'll be the first, you know, everybody will be the first to know. I get some ideas, but I also am very mindful. I will say this. I could easily set up a merch, a merch booth, a merch thing. I don't want to clutter up your life until you get a better handle on your clutter. I don't want you to think that purchasing something is going to make it, you know, boom. I would rather when I coach now, as every, people, my, my clients know, I say, go to Staples, buy yourself literally like a 50 cent spiral bound notebook. That's really all you need to coach with me. That and, you know getting on a consult and all that. So, um, yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Put laundry away while listening to you said Royal September needed to do it for a long time. Notice all that it took for you to do that. Learn from this experience. Everybody who's on here again, I'm only on for like four minutes and then I've got stuff to do and I've got texts to respond to and things. Notice that sometimes all it takes is a little bit of quieting down the backseat drivers. Shh. Stop telling me I can't, that it's too much, that I'm overwhelmed. S quiet down. I love you, but shut the F up. As you would say to probably if you had children or nieces and nephews. Now my nieces and nephews, I have to text my niece. She just turned 21, 22 today. Oh my God, K. Quiet them down. Take a pause and then listen for your own internal co-pilot. Now temporarily, I am in your life to be that voice, to to let you know how it feels to, to show you how it feels when you quiet down those voices and somebody's there in your, in your, in your life saying, you got this, you can do it. I know you can do it. I wouldn't be here if you didn't. I wouldn't tell you you couldn't do, you could do it if you couldn't, you know? I mean, I look around at so many things in my life and trust me, I am not in a mansion, nor do I care to be, but I have so many things that my, my Smith's listening 20 year old, sad, funky, discouraged, scared me, would be like, yeah, you're freaking kidding me that that's gonna be your life. Incrementally, and it's happened a lot faster in my 50s, I will say this, I have changed my life in 40s and actually 30s, um, but incrementally I've changed my life so I freaking love it. I have had to take the long way, I had to cut a path. I learned some shortcuts. I know what to do now. That's why I became a coach because it's almost like being a tour guide my friend does Route 66 tours. The first time he did it, he figured out where to stop, what to do, when it gets boring, how to make it. Same type of thing. I have been from cluttered to decluttered. And I want to show you that roadmap. I have the roadmap. And again, this doesn't mean to sound infomercially, but one-on-one -on -one coaching gives you the custom roadmap because we meet you where you are. We talk about where you've been. We find a way that works for you. If this doesn't work, no big deal. Let's try it again. What works? Yay, do more of it. What doesn't work? Get curious. Pull it apart. Pull the good stuff out. Discard the bad. Try again. Iterate. Iterate. Constant improvement. Kaizen your life. You know? All that good stuff. Okay? Your co-pilot is evil, says Marion. Nah. I don't think so. And I bet, I bet you just have a story. I bet that's your backseat driver telling you your co-pilot's evil. But you know what? There we go. Okay. Okay. What about if someone starts to freak out when you're coaching them? Well, I will say this. It's never happened. But when people start to feel feelings, we just sit with them and then allow them to feel them at the, at the way that they can. But I will be honest with you. One of the reasons I do a consultation. So a consultation, if you go to my website, destinationdeclutter.com, and you schedule a consultation, you look at a calendar, you pick a date, we, set, we both show up, here's me on Zoom, here's you on Zoom, wherever you are, and we just chat on Zoom. One of the reasons I do a consultation with every potential client um, before um, we agree to do coaching is to see if we're a good fit. And one of the things that I do is I wanna make sure that what I offer and the level of help I offer is going to get the result that that person needs. If they seem to be of the type that might be struggling with some issues that I am not trained to handle, with love for them as a human being on their journey, I will say, I don't think this is a good fit. However, let's problem solve. Let's give you some next steps that you can take to get you the help you need. But all of us, you know, experience feelings. I will say this. I think a lot of what we do that has gotten us here is because we've tried to like not feel feelings. We've tried to be more like robots and less like feeling human creatures. We don't take into account how things, when we look at them, make us tell us stories that make us feel something and the correlation between what you think and you feel and you do. But if somebody starts to cry, I sit there. 
I give them space. I'm, I allow them to go through that. I always think of it as like a rain shower on a road trip. Drive through the rain, feel it, get on the other side, and feel better on the other side. Okay? There we go. All right. Um, okay, everybody, it is 11 o'clock Eastern time. My name is Beth. Destination Decluttered uh, is here, I'm here on TikTok. I do these TikTok lives. I, get a, uh, I do some TikTok videos. I also do one-on-one -on -one coaching. So if you want me to be your one-on-one -on -one coach, I do a 10 session package, however many of those you need. They're like little boxes in, in a row. However many of those packages you need to get to where you wanna go to, I am here for you. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about that, go to my website, destinationdecluttered.com slash join. Sign up for my mailing list. Look at the website. It's got to wake a lot of information, testimonials, yada, yada. Um, but do something today to get your life a little bit more the way you want it. Show up tomorrow. Lather, rinse, repeat. And thank you so much for everybody who showed up. Um, as I said, too, if you sign up for the mailing list today, I have a finite number of these stickers. I'm not saying that to be in scarcity mode. I'm just being realistic. Is if you want a sticker that says every little bit helps, um, join the mailing list. You'll get an email, an automatic email. Um, if you don't get an automatic email, send me a message here through TikTok um, and so I can problem solve it. Sometimes people get stuck in the, um, in the filter. Um, and then respond to the email and say I'd like a sticker and I will let you know how to get it. Pretty much you're gonna send me a self-addressed stamped envelope and I'll pop in one in the mail, okay? Um, okay, thank you Blue Bottle Finds for saying, I like the idea of you helping people not actually doing it for them. Yes, I could do this for you in a hot minute. And if seriously, if you want to pay me $25,000 a week, I'll come to your house and do it, plus expenses. But trust me, it's so much more life-changing and powerful and meaningful when you learn how to do it yourself. Instead of somebody driving you everywhere you want to go and being reliant on somebody else to do it, when you learn how to do it yourself, it's a game changer, okay? All right, I will see you guys. I have some TikTok Lives um, scheduled for... Um, this upcoming week, people on the mailing list already know when they are. I will do a video at some point this weekend to let you know about them. If you're not on the mailing list, you'll find out later. But I will see you a couple times this week. And in the meantime, have an awesome Saturday. Um, and I'll catch you on the flip side, okay? Bye. 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 I can never shut this off. <laughs>